Hello everyone, welcome to Enterprise System Development course and today we will talk about Unified Modeling Language. So probably most of all are familiar with UML, uh, but we will talk today with more details. So firstly, this uh, standard was made by Object Management Group, OMG, so you can visit their site and read additional information. It is international association and they working around UML development, some standardization, also where you can find some links on some books. But uh, first probably question, why we need UML? So why people designed it and uh, which problems uh, this instrument solved? So when some business people or it could be developers when they interact between and when they want to explain uh, what they want to get, which solution they found or maybe which requirements they want. And during this interaction, if our product is significant, if could be software product, it could be hardware product, it could be mixed. But when you're trying to explain to other people how it could work and you usually using diagrams, of course you can use some text, but also you can talk. But the, the most useful instruments it's just from my experience from the experience of other people it's diagrams and you use diagrams and you talk with other people but sometimes they don't understand or not understand in details what you want to explain or uh, some diagrams is good enough when you are near but when they looking on these diagrams without you they have some questions so people decide that we need universal symbol notation universal not tied to specific technologies and notation should be verified on real projects so some kind of projects are very similar to each other so it could be useful to have some templates which you can use in your work, templates of symbols, templates of diagrams. And also it can be not just during interaction between like some businesses, but also when you're trying to explain to developers, when developers trying to explain some their vision, these diagrams are very helpful. <clears throat> so, one of book uh, which you can read at least briefly. Uh, it's called uh, the Object Grammar, uh, so you can find it at internet. Uh, also, you can use another kind of source of books about UML notation. They are in general very similar, and uh, usually the general understanding is enough. Just some. Uh, general images, general symbols. So this notation includes uh, based on the object-oriented concepts. So if you if you visited uh, object-oriented programming courses, or if you are just familiar with uh, object-oriented programming, I think this terms are you familiar with these terms but let's briefly to see at them so first of all abstract class class that doesn't have object intended from it so it's just a class for classes abstraction and aggregation aggregation hierarchy and so on so attributes class classifier so all of these terms are, are about object-oriented concepts and 
all of these terms are used in the QML notation. Also, for basic uh, concepts, um, class, object, attribute, and method. So we have classes, the some abstractions of objects. Also, we have some entities of this abstraction called object objects. Uh, these objects have attributes and methods. Uh, attribute is um, some data element uh, records and method. It's some functions procedures of our object. So this is more about statements. This is more about some actions. And uh, also we have bunch of diagram templates in our UML notation, but in general, it can be divided on three groups. Uh, first group is behavior diagrams. Uh, this group include activity diagrams, state machine diagram, use case, interaction diagrams, uh, interaction diagrams, uh, which include communication, iteration overview, sequence and timing diagrams, and also structure diagrams, which includes class composite, component, and so on diagrams about structure. So usually which diagram you have to choose is depend on what you want to show, what you want to explain. And usually it's good idea to look at your project uh, on your product from different points so from the point of interaction and at the same time from the point of structure and it's helpful this division of points is helpful and here is the uh, first part of the probably the main diagrams of human notation uh, in practice usually you use just maybe two three of types of diagrams but if you're interested in you i think you should to to verify to just briefly look at all of these types of diagrams so first is activity diagram and this shows business processes data flows some complex logic Class diagram shows collection of static models, elements, classes, types, and so on. Communication, uh, as you can understand from the name, it's about flows between some instances, classes. Component is about components. Composite structure is like internal structure. Deployment diagram is about execution architecture some hardware, software environments. Interaction is about variant of activity. So it's, it looks like uh, they're similar, but uh, there's more about, I think it's have some different types of symbols. So, so object is about relationship. So uh, some of these diagrams are very similar. Mm, but you can choose like what you like more. So, so we have package diagram, sequence, state machine, timing, and use case diagram. And uh, today also we will talk uh, about the most popular diagram. Uh, we will talk about use case and about class diagrams, uh, but a little bit later. And so mainly uh, how it looks the transformation from the real world to the diagram representation. So in real world we have here is like example. So we have student and we have some course and we want to to write some like to create some diagrams of this situation. So we have student, he has name, he has some ID, student number, 
we have birth date and he is enrolling on seminars and pay tutor. Also, we have seminar. He is he includes some information uh, who take part in this seminar. Also, it keeps track of the students that enrolled. Also, it's enable students to enroll and drop me from their shadows. So, uh, students able to enroll or drop this course. So, it looks like Coursera, Situation, or EDX, so South MOO. C courses if you know and uh, it's kind of mm, kind of class diagram we have we can create student and seminar classes and as in previous uh, student have name phone number student number also it have some methods like you can Find by name, enroll in seminar, drop seminar, pay tutor, request transcript, so like what your imaginarity. And seminar, uh, you have instruction, location, list of students, also probably it have name, but here just list of students, location, okay. And it's possible to add student and remove student from the seminar. Uh, so this was an example. Uh, also, this is uh, more about the main things in object-oriented design, abstraction, encapsulation, and information hiding. Also, uh, usually uh, it's have to be uh, in inheritance, but for some reason here is like abstraction, encapsulation, information, information hiding. Okay. The abstraction is determination of what class knows and does. Capsulation is hiding some details of implementation of methods. And uh, here just have to be inheritance in, uh, that some classes can be parents of their child classes. So uh, we will talk about uh, um, later. But some classes uh, to save your time for description, you can just create some abstract class and describe some methods, some main methods and attributes in this class. And after that, create some child classes which just have some additional methods, but in general, they inherit general methods and inherit general attributes from the parent class. Also, some couple of slides about technical requirements. Uh, this is usually in the initial stages of the project. We have to describe in some, in some way the requirements to our product. And uh, here is like two approaches how we can do it first is requirement and after that development this is the most usual and uh, another way it's like product development first and then requirements uh, it's sometimes when we use reverse engineering when we have some product and uh, some competitive product is our requirement so customer brings to us the product and say i want that it should be like this but it's a little bit better so as a requirements we have product and we reverse engineer this also agile this is kind of situation when we have development uh, of product in the same time with the requirements development and of course, sometimes it can be just management mistake. So we just don't make requirements in the full manner. So we have to recreate some requirements and we do it uh, in the same time with development. So uh, also when we talk about requirements, we have to think about product functions 
after that, based on these functions, we have some requirement development. And based on these requirements, we can create architecture and uh, think about product structure development. So this is usually how product architecture development looks like. And uh, more in details. So which artifacts we have. We have business rules, constraints, uh, glossary and technical requirements, what we have to define during this process. Business rules is uh, some definitions of which business processes, uh, uh, what behaviors of our business, how, how it will go if we talk about company or if we talk about some product or new service. So which business processes it will include. Constraints, usually in every project we have constraints, like in time, in budget, in people, in some, in some different things. So we have to define these two. Glossary, to interact between developers, between different people, to understand Clearly, what we want, we have to define some terms, what the meanings, and of course, technical requirements, some aspects, some requirements to our product. <clears throat> business rules can be made uh, in a way like business rule, the number of this business rule, and uh, the description of this business role. So in the previous example, we can make business roles like all master's degree programs must include development of the thesis. Like, uh, technical requirements can be general and can be more specific, like System requirements include requirements to some system, subsystem, and it uh, includes some requirements to the components. <clears throat> and also, it have to have, have to work together. And uh, also, uh, which is familiar for me. Uh, instrument is a uh, HCPP. This instrument made by Renault Group. It has some description. Uh, the idea of uh, this instrument is to make a uh, hierarchy of the requirements and uh, they, their production is uh, automotive. This is cars and they determine the different groups of requirements. So basic principles, how we divide our requirements, it's uh, importance rank, important for safety, this is the highest rank. Important for operability, this is a little bit lower, but important. And important for customer, this is in the middle, but it's important, and also other other ranks. And another definition is numerical values of uh, so-called key characteristics. So, which characteristics we have to um, have to have. Also when we define technical requirement ranks and key characteristic we can create so-called hcpp map and this map used uh, when we choosing supplier during supplier nomination process and uh, when supplier save it he can satisfy some requirements but not able to satisfy another we use this hcpp map 
and make decision. Will we work with this supplier and uh, change some requirements or it's not possible and we're just going to look for another supplier which is able to satisfy our requirements. So this is kind of instrument to help to recognize which requirements are the more the most important for our business so uh, let's talk about the most uh, the most uh, famous diagrams and first of all i think the most useful is use case diagram which also helpful uh, during definition of requirements to our software to our product on this diagram we show so-called actors it is sites it can be group of people or just single people uh, who interact with our product or who take part in our business process also we create so-called use cases it's the uh, cases uh, of interaction and they have description and uh, here we we will not show on this diagram the sequence which is which case is goes first and which is second on this diagram it's not possible to show uh, we have different types of diagram to show it like sequence or state diagram but on this diagram we can show like okay customer is checking balance and bank take part in this use case and uh, also we can understand for checking balance probably customer have to log in before this okay and we create use cases of login and uh, will the customer need to create to do something before login uh, i don't know maybe download our application or install so we can create additional use cases and just not forgot about these use cases so this diagram shows to us that all situations all steps which we can see on the one page also for some situation we can use this uh, dashed arrow and uh, it mean include relation when we have base use case and we have include use case and we wanted to show that uh, we have situation when this activity include this activity if base use case executed then included use case executed and also we have extend this is two opposite direction so if base use case executed then extend use case executed sometimes but not every time so it, it, it can be but not every time and here is example so login is not possible without verifying password but display login error it can be if the login is wrong but if everything is fine it's not not strict and also the another situation when we have general use case and we have some specialized use cases we can show this like in this manner and uh, also we can show the some relations between actors like customer and we can have returning customer and new customer so if it's important for us we can show it to on the use case diagram also we can uh, show some descriptions 
if it, if we have to. And probably that's all what you have to know about use case diagrams. Uh, second time of diagrams is class diagrams. And uh, on these diagrams, every class we show like uh, this rectangle block. It has name of class on this field. Here also we have attributes field like name and type of object and method field when we show methods. Also this signs minus plus uh, sometimes you um, shows is this method private or it's public or it's <clears throat> yes, uh, like minus is mean private plus mean public. This uh, sign is protected and uh, if, if package default, so this the symbol uh, as you remember from the object oriented classes private cannot be assessed by any class or subclass public is can be assessed by any class or class protected only by same class or subclasses and package default can be used by any other class in the same package and some kinds of relation between classes how we can show it so in this example we have like animal and this is parent also sometimes super class called and uh, from the animal we have some child classes tortoise otter show lorries and uh, some of them can inherit some attributes so yes on this image they are all inherited attributes and methods but also they can have own attributes like in the author case yes and we show this by this type of arrow with white head and here's two examples first like when we have airplane car and we have vehicle as parent class and uh, we just um inherite some attributes like in the end we have all attributes of parent class in our class and all new attributes which we describe in the subclass and another situation also when we have a class which is inherits from the two parent classes it's possible in some languages like c plus plus uh, and this subclass have attributes from this class, like maximum speed, we span, and from this number class, scale colors. So it's possible to. Another another type of relation is association. When we have, when we want to, to show that this class is able to interact in some manner. We can show that in this example author he is its the option and we have to probably add some methods which define this interact another type of relation between class is aggregation relation so this is showed by this type of some symbols or this head of arrows and in this example we have creep like group of tortoises and we have tortoise which is member of the creep and in this relation it's include it's the tortoise is part of the creep but uh if the tortoise destroyed the creep is keep is survived and also if the creep is destroyed the tortoise of the script is um, is survived too, so this relation is not strict, but in opposite, also another type of relation called composition. In this situation, the subclasses of the parent class they are more strictly related to each other and 
when the parent class is destroyed, then the subclasses of this class is destroyed too, and in opposite, when the subclasses are destroyed, the main class is destroyed too. So composed object cannot exist without the sub objects. Mm, but probably yes, yeah, the sub objects I think is able to exist without the main subclass. It's depend of it's it's possible to make this situation. So also about multiplicity, you can show on the class diagram the relation of multiplicity, like how much objects to each other it's able to have. It's useful when you're working with databases and how it showed like visitor center can have only have only one lobby. So here's the multiplicity is only one and visitor center bathroom so one visitor center too many it's able to have many bathrooms so what is true also it can be one too many or specific number of range and here is example of market market situation when we have customer user administrator all the details and so so customer has name, address, and able to register, login, update profile. It one customer can have zero or many shopping carts, but every shopping cart have only one customer. So customer and uh, ship shopping cart and order are connected by the composition relation so it's mean when customer is destroyed so probably and shopping cart and order is destroyed too at the same time the customer is the subclass of the user class and it inherits some fields from this parent class so also you can see here are some object um, like attribute types for some languages it's not useful anymore but you can show just uh, to better understand what it should look like so um, today we will talk about UML general description notation and uh, use case and class diagrams on the following lectures, we will talk about different types of diagrams. So thank you for listening and see you on the next videos. Bye-bye.